Hey, this is Kevin from kevinsguides.com, and welcome to chapter two of the Intro to Joomla series. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to install Joomla on our local computer using the XAMPP test environment. So XAMPP, X-A-M-P-P, that stands for Cross-Platform Apache, MySQL, PHP, and Perl. More specifically, it's using Maria database, which is a free MySQL uh, database software that we can run on our computer. So go over to apachefriends.org, download XAMPP for Windows, and we're going to be using the latest version of PHP, PHP 8.1. Normally, this doesn't automatically start for me, so if you do have to go over to SourceForge, go ahead, find the installer for your operating system, the correct version, and then make sure you are getting the installer and not the portable version. So I'm going to go with XAMPP Windows 64-bit 8.1 installer.exe. Download that guy. Once it's done, go ahead and open it up. So I have the installer here. And we install this like we would any other Windows program. Now if you're using Mac, you're going to have to install it the Mac way or you drag the application into your applications folder. If you're on Linux, you might have to install it using an install script. Go ahead and just install everything. And to select your folder, I'm using my D drive slash XAMPP, so that's the directory that I want to install it into. Now it's important that you remember this directory, so that's why it's like a top-level directory, not like program files or something like that because we want easy access to it, but you can really put it wherever you want and it'll work fine. I do prefer putting it in the top directory of my drive. Let's uncheck, learn about more about Bitnami. That's to help you install Joomla and WordPress and things like that, but we're gonna learn how to install it manually. So go ahead and install XAMPP and wait for that guy to finish. All right, so XAMPP's done installing. Now we can finish. We will open the control panel right away. Now we can see we have different modules, Apache and MySQL. Those are the two we need for Joomla to be working. If you're using a different operating system, you might have different things under here, like FileZilla, Mercury, and Tomcat. Those all have to do with FTP, sending emails, and things of that nature. We can ignore those features for now. Now let's actually close this and run it as an administrator because we do not have all the permissions to do things. So run XAMPP as a control panel as an administrator. And now we have the option to install Apache and MySQL as a service if we want to. If we do this, it will automatically run Apache and MySQL when we turn our computer on. So I normally like to have that on because I do a fair amount of development. But if you only want those things running when you're actively testing something, you can just use the manual start buttons. So we have Apache and MySQL installed as services, and we're just going to go ahead and start those. Now let's take a look at our website. So for our local test site, that's just going to be localhost. And when we type in localhost, it takes us to the XAMPP dashboard. So this is like the default website that is installed through XAMPP. So this is our local test environment. We're running a website. Everything is working if you see the screen. So now we can go ahead and install Joomla to do that. Go to joomla.org. We're going to download Joomla. We're going to get the latest full version. Save it. It's a zip archive. And while we're doing that, let me show you the htdocs folder. So htdocs is the base directory for our web server. So if I go to my D drive in this case, wherever you installed XAMPP, there is this htdocs. 
And these are all the files that get displayed on the web server. So index.php, for example, that's going to redirect us to the dashboard. And then these are all those files that were showing up on this page here. So these are the files on the web server that make this page or this dashboard website work. So we are actually going to not be using the dashboard. So htdocs, we can still leave all that there, but we're going to create a new folder in here and we're just going to call this Joomla or whatever you want. Just make sure there's no spaces in it. So Joomla, and that's where we are going to install Joomla to. So we just open the archive and we want to extract all the files in here in this archive into our Joomla folder. So I'm using 7-zip, but if you're using Windows, you can use the extract all feature. You want to make sure you are extracting it into the Joomla directory, not a subfolder. And just because 7-zip's faster, I'm going to use 7-zip to extract mine. So now what are we looking at? Well, these are all the different files that make up Joomla. If we go to localhost slash Joomla now, whoops, I need to do, put HTTP in there. Hit localhost slash Joomla. And it takes me to the Joomla installer. For some reason, it thinks we're using German. I'll ignore that. Now we can leave this as localhost slash Joomla and just go ahead and install it there. But I prefer to make Joomla my main directory. So it's not a subdirectory of localhost. It's just Joomla. To do that, we need to go back to the control panel. This step's optional. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. We're going to stop Apache. We're going to go to config. And we're going to edit Apache's config file, which is httpd.conf, C-O-N-F. And what we are looking for here is the htdocs directory, this document root property. That is the main folder that our web server gets all its files from. So instead of getting them from htdocs, I'm just going to say get them from htdocs slash Joomla. I just save that, close, start Apache again. And now if I go to my local host, it will take me directly to that Joomla directory without me having that or seeing Joomla in the address bar. So now that we're in the Joomla installer, we can select our language. I'm in the United States, so I'm going to use the United States version of English. I'm just going to call my website, my first Joomla website. Go ahead, next, and set up our login details for our super user. So our super user is the highest level account on the Joomla install. So we're going to need to make a username and a password for this Joomla account. The username could just be admin, or you could use your name and the password. And my password is going to be password pass, just for testing purposes. Then the email address for the super user. So the address associated with this account, admin at nowhere.com. Perfect. All right, now we have to configure our database. If you're using a web host, you're going to have to set up your database through their control panel or whatever they call it for Joomla and DAMP on a local test server. We can just say our host is going to be localhost because we're hosting the server or the database on our computer. The username by default with DAMP is root. And there is no password. So this would be a huge security issue if this was a live server. But we're only running it on our computer and no one else has access to it. So localhost root no password. There are ways to configure that, but we don't need to worry about that for now. 
the database name. So this is the database that is in our MySQL database that we're going to be putting all our Joomla tables into. So Joomla is going to use this database to get all its information from and store settings and all that fun stuff. Joomla underscore DB, that's fine. If the database does not already exist in the in MySQL, it will just create the database for us as long as we have permission. And as root user, we do have permission to create databases. The table prefix, that is what comes before every table in the database. And it's just randomly generated with an underscore. And that's in case you are using the same database for multiple different installations of different software, you're going to want to have different table names for each install. So if I had two Joomla websites, for example, installed on the same exact database, I would want to use different table prefixes so it doesn't mix up the data from the two different databases. The encryption can be default. And we can just leave the table prefix as is. And then we hit Install Joomla. Now, just so you have an idea of what's going on here. So congratulations, your Joomla site's ready. So just set up our database and our Joomla config for us, our basic configuration settings. If we go to MySQL under XAMPP Control Panel and we click Admin, it's going to take us to a tool called PHP My Admin. And this is a browser-based tool that is used to manage MySQL databases. As you can see, there's some test databases already in here, in addition to our Joomla database. So this is what the installer just did for us. It created all these tables that Joomla needs to function. Now, you don't need to know how these tables and databases work, really, to use Joomla, but that's where they are. So now we can open our site. Um, if you see any errors or recommendations here, you can ignore them. Just for testing, we can change that later. So we go to Open Site, and this happens on Windows sometimes. The installation folder cannot be deleted due to whatever permissions issues are going on. And it just says to manually delete the install folder. So if this was on a live website, we wouldn't want the install folder to remain after we're done installing Joomla. Otherwise, anyone could just log in and overwrite our website or connect it to some external database, which would be bad. So go back to your htdocs slash Joomla directory and just manually delete the installation folder if that comes up. Now we should be able to just go back to localhost. And this is what Joomla looks like with nothing in it. So it's just showing our default template on the front end. If we go to localhost slash administrator, it's going to take us to the back end. And I had some pre-filled passwords saved there. So if I log in using my super user account admin, password pass, now I can see my administration dashboard and make all the changes necessary to my website. We're going to get more into the different settings in the next chapter. So that's going to be where I leave this one here. Thanks for watching. And next time we're going to talk about setting up the global configuration. So take care.